Enjoy choral music at its best with the world-renowned Ukrainian Bandurist Chorus. Experience the exotic sound of the Bandura and the resilient voices of its all-male choir. For a memorable evening of choral music at its best, see and hear the Ukrainian Bandurist Chorus. Тішайтеся найкращою хоровою музикою, світової слави капелею бандуристів імені Тараса Шевченка. Послухайте екзотичний звук бандури та бадьорі голоси мужицького хору. За пам'ятним вечором хорової музики побачте і послухайте капелю бандуристів імені Тараса Шевченка. Marco, how long have you been in the Capella? Um, I first came to the Capella in 1977, so I've been with them uh, seven years already. Uh huh. How do you do? You find it difficult uh, with the practices? I think every week you practice, and then every two weeks you have a, a major practice, putting in so much time. Do you find that difficult? Um, not very difficult. Of course, it is difficult with the times, but uh, I have my priorities, of course and uh, this comes first on my list. And since I'm from Cleveland, the group's in Detroit. In Cleveland, we have a local rehearsal every Friday. Uh, so Friday night partying is out for me, basically. And then every other Sunday, we take a drive to Detroit and have a rehearsal here. What about you, Paul? Do you find that it cuts into your social life, the, the long hours of practice? Well, as Mark stated, it's you know where you set your priorities. and. Uh, we sort of set aside the time knowing, we know in advance when we're supposed to have rehearsals or when we're going on a concert tour. So we just leave those open and unless some sort of emergency came up where we couldn't make it, basically we try to attend each one because of the limited time that we have to prepare. Marco, can you tell us something about the instrument, the bandura? It's, um, uh, it looks like a, some kind of a combina combination between a harp and a... a a lira or something like that. Uh, yes, it's a, it's a cross between a lute and a harp. Um, it's a strictly a Ukrainian instrument. This, there are several different types of it. We use this type because of its versatility. It has 59 strings, um, and the most uh, uh, significant feature of this type of instrument are these little levers at each string. Since uh, we do not stay in one tonality, for each song, we change keys. We go from, let's say, uh, G major to maybe E flat uh, major. So each string has a lever that brings it up a half tone or down a half tone, and thus we can put it in any key that we want. Mm -hmm. And for the whole chorus, it uh, enhances the versatility of the repertoire. Do you think that its uniqueness is, is an attraction for North Americans, other than the people of Ukrainian background, for whom, of course, it's a very, very famous uh, almost sacred, I suppose, instrument. Yeah. Among uh, 
Americans, Canadians, it's very unique because it's rare. They've never seen it before. And they always ask a lot of questions and they're very enchanted by the sound. Mm -hmm. It's uh, quite unique for them and they're, 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 they are very interested in it. Now when you go on tour, you have to memorize all of the music. And uh, I gather for a tour that might involve 20 or more songs. Do you find that difficult? Where do you, where do you store uh, all that music? You have a hollow leg or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, through frequent rehearsals and also uh, knowing uh, most of the songs from uh, previous experience or, uh, or if it's something new, you always set aside the time to practice at home. Also, a lot of these uh, songs we've known ever since we were chi since childhood. It's been passed on uh, from generation to generation. So basically, you know a lot of these uh, songs even before you've uh, joined the Kapalya. Now, as far as uh, learning it and maintaining it on the instrument, uh, I would imagine that would take a little bit of doing, more so on their own part, practicing at home and so on and so forth. Paul, you, uh, you come out to practice. You take two weeks or so vacation and you go on tour and uh, basically you work very very hard uh, it must involve a lot of dedication why are you so dedicated to the uh, uh, Capella? well again it's you know where you where you would like to put your priorities uh, as far as myself was concerned uh, I really like really enjoy doing it and I think that's uh, basically uh, what uh, each each one of our members we were basically we've really enjoyed doing it we we're fond of uh, our Ukrainian heritage of our Ukrainian uh, songs and whatever and it's you know we even though it may be difficult at times we seem to find the time and uh, you know go on from there mm -hmm. it's not that uh, anybody is forcing us or it's a great burden on us it's just like uh, I don't know, it's just like a hobby. Somebody, like a skier, loves to ski. We, we love to be in the competitive. It's a natural high. I, I would like to say from my experience, when I was a young boy, uh, I would always have the Capella records, and that would be the ultimate goal for me to achieve as a Bandura player. Is, and that was always a, uh, it was always too far away, but suddenly it happened. And, and being in this organization is just the greatest thing for me as a Bandurist, as an individual, that, uh, you know, I just do it. There's no questions asked. Mm -hmm. It's just, it has to be done. Maestro uh, Kataste, he's a, a very um, uh, traditional, uh, disciplinarian, authoritarian. Do you find that uh, difficult? Um, is, is it difficult for you to toe the line with him? Do you think more difficult than it is for some of the older members of the uh, choir? I think that we all realize uh, since we do not have a lot of time for rehearsals, we all realize the limited time that we have and that each person has to be at his top of attentiveness at each rehearsal. And uh, basically, it's, uh, we all work together for the perfection of each uh, piece. So uh, I think it's a group effort to cooperate in this uh, task. Mm -hmm. Do you find the, the discipline difficult, Paul? Well, no, I would tend to agree with Mark that we, we do know our limitations as far as time-wise and as far as trying to prepare for uh, either a concert or a tour. And uh, when we are, when Rehori Kirtasti is conducting rehearsals, we tend to be as attentive as we can because of the time factor involved mm -hmm. and the rarities in which we get together. Because we're scattered, there's a group in Cleveland, a group, a group in Chicago, a group in Toronto of us. New York. New York, Detroit, and uh, you know, it takes time and it takes money to uh, get us all together. And I think from that aspect, everybody is, you know, knows what we have to do and how much time we have to do it. And we are, we do keep everything mm -hmm. fairly together. When you're traveling, when you're on tour, um, you must find it very hectic. You're, first of all, you're, you're doing a lot of traveling and you're performing in a lot of different places. Um, how do you manage? How do you find that? Oh, it's, well, in the, as far as resting, or uh, how do you... Mm -hmm. Well, I think we more or less sack ourselves out for this because we know that uh, basically it's going to be every night, say if we have a two-week concert tour, it's basically every night we have a concert. 
and uh, there's been times where days have been des designated for uh, relaxation, and then on the spur of the moment, some small town or something would uh, uh, ask uh, our administrator, Mr. Hancharenko, if we could perform or even a few, few tunes for them or a half of a concert. And, you know, they will confront us and ask us if we, we would go for that, and naturally, we basically agreed, you know, to go and see these people and give them a concert because of the fact that it's very rare that the Capella goes any place, I mean, especially to a small town. So we basically know in advance that, you know, it's going to be hectic and uh, as far as sleep, we get a lot of sleep on the bus <coughs> in between uh, concerts. You sort, I mean, catch up on you sort of fall into a schedule of uh, you wake up at 8 in the morning and drive on a bus all day. You get to the place, you have a short rehearsal, we do the concert, there's always uh, a reception afterwards, and then, you know, we try to grab as much sleep as we can. Probably on the bus, with all the partying and, and the performing, I imagine that's oh. where you do a lot of your sleeping. Mm -hmm. But it's a, you have a lot of adrenaline going for a lot of the concerts. You know, you know that there's two weeks that you have to do this tour, and mm -hmm. you're sort of prepared for it. Like, say, take for example, we'll, we'll come to some sort of a concert hall and you're dead tired. And it seems just as soon as we get on the stage, uh, something within you starts motivating you. and uh, Something clicks. Clicks. And just everything clicks. And, uh, you know, just you're so full of vitality right away that uh, it, just, it just goes right out, right Especially away. Especially the response of the audience. You yeah. know, it sort of a lot to do helps you a lot. And then sure. you get that extra energy to do what you have to do. Now you have young men such as yourselves, 20, in your 20s and 30s and so forth, and you also have older men in your, their 60s and 70s. Uh, what's the uh, camaraderie like? How do you get along uh, when you're touring together? Well, basically... There is no generation gap. There's no generation gap, and I guess you could call it as... Uh, the Ukraine used to be famous for Cossacks, centuries past, and I think that uh, this is basically... Uh, in comparable to, to comparable, it. yes. Yeah. Uh, so the camaraderie is great. Like uh, one member may be seventy years old and the next one may be eighteen, and you have no feeling of a generation gap or anything like that. It's uh, uh, I always felt welcome in, in the group, even when I joined. I was nineteen when I joined, and uh, I never felt that I was too young or didn't belong there. And I'm sure Mark felt the same way when he joined, and the younger younger guys. How do you see, in, in terms of the younger people um, uh, getting involved uh, both instrumentally and vocally, how do you see the future? I mean, perhaps we could bring with, uh, begin with you, Marco. Um, in the past 10 years, the Capella has been uh, reinforced with the younger Banduriste, and this is uh, mostly due to the fact that uh, the Capella sponsors many Bandura workshops and uh, summer camps. Uh, to teach the instrument and from that uh, there have been individuals